Now, this teaching is on deception in the churches. We've learned a lot already how much deception is out there. A lot. And this teaching is, is at a good timing because we need to know. We need to know these because the devil is no longer hiding. The way the world is now, he is no longer hiding. He is bringing things out in the open. And, and one way you could tell, watch TV. You have a commercial. What's on the commercial now? Gays, lesbians. It's just out in the open now. It's not, uh, and th the world has received it as, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's why we advertise our products with gays on there. But anyway, we're learning there's a lot of deception out there, a lot. In the church, in churches of God, I'm not talking about cults, which I have a, got a little bit on the cults, but I'm talking about churches of God. We don't need to fall down to them. And believe it or not, the Jehovah Witness, there's a lot of people, Christian people, who think that's a church. That's a church of God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So everyone that says Jesus Christ, God come in the flesh, is of the Lord. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Now, now do the Jehovah's Witness recognize Jesus as God in the flesh? No, they don't. So what is the scriptures calling them? The Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So the Lord is saying, you've heard of the Antichrist. He's even in the world now. Anyone who doesn't believe that Jesus is God come in the flesh, the Lord says, that is the Antichrist. 2 John 1, seven, For many deceivers are entered into the world. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist. That's the words of God. Okay? That's the words of God. Huh? I'm not saying this. It's the words of God. They look at the, the Jehovah's Witness, they look at Jesus as just another man. They do not look at him as the Son of God or God. They have rejected the Lord Jesus, and he has shown himself to them as he has everybody else. Jehovah's Witness have the Lord has shown himself to Jehovah's Witnesses. And the reason I say that is John 1, 9, and this is just one, there's others. John 1, 9, that was the true light, speaking of Jesus. He was the true light, right? Which lighteth, ev which lighteth every man. Did he say some men? No, he says, I show myself to every man. That cometh into the world. Any man that's in the world right now. He has shown himself to that man or woman. So when the time comes on judgment day. They will not be able to say. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh yes you did. I showed myself to you. Because God doesn't lie does he? So if he says he lights himself. He shows himself to every man. Then he has. Amen. The Lord says that the spirit of the Antichrist, those who don't receive him, and he's already in the world. The ones who claim that Jesus is not the Christ, that's why they're already in the world. The Lord calls him Antichrist. Not the, not the Antichrist. Not the Antichrist. But just like Jesus is the light. We're just little lights. So the Antichrist, these Antichrists are just little Antichrists. But the main Antichrist, the Antichrist, I don't know. 
I don't know if he's here already or he's yet to come. I don't know. The world, I'll have to use my mother because I had a sister who was Jehovah's Witness for a while. She's not now. Now she's a born-again Christian. Amen. But she used to be Jehovah's Witness. And I was trying to tell her about Jehovah's Witnesses, and she says, leave her alone. She's in church. She was looking at Jehovah's Witnesses' church as just like everybody else's. Catholic, Baptist, Pentecost. Well, they're not. But do you know how many people are believe like she does, even now? That's why I gave these verses. That's why I'm teaching this. So people will know who they are. They're like the devil. They are like the, y'all hear me? Jehovah Witness are like the devil. They're lying and they're deceiving. And they're doing a pretty good job of it. You know why I say they're doing a pretty good job of it? Are we, the true born-again Christians, are we out there on the streets going door-to-door? Are we? No. Are they? Yes. So they're, do, they're very good at what they do. They're good deceivers. But they're liars. But you have a lot of people following them. I mean, if, they don't, if, if we're not going out there preaching to them, teaching them, witnessing to them, and they don't read the Bible, well, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I believe that. They're going to follow them. The servants of the devil are better than we are. Y'all hear me? Not better as spiritually good as God, but I'm talking about working, doing the work of the Lord. It's, a, it's something we shouldn't be proud of at all. So people who can't call Jesus Lord in the spirit from the heart cannot be a Christian, cannot be a believer. I know you, you hear people say, uh, Lord, you know, they, it's easy to say here, physically like, from the mind. But to truly call Jesus Lord in the spirit, they can't do it. They can't do it. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit, that's why I'm saying the spirit, the spirit of God, calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Only people who have the Spirit can call from the heart, can call Jesus Lord. There's a lot of religious people out there who can, who, who, who can call Jesus Lord, but it's not coming from the heart. It's not coming from the Spirit of God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If Jehovah God didn't come down to earth to become flesh, if he didn't, like the Jehovah Witness believe that that God did not come down to become flesh, Jesus. How can they be forgiven? What has God did for, for, for them to have forgiveness of their, unless they think they're perfect, which I don't think they do. So how do they get forgiveness? If they don't believe that God came in the flesh, became Jesus, died on the cross for our sins, how, where do they get their forgiveness from? You got to have the shed in the blood, which Jesus did, but they don't believe in him. Not only did Jesus have to shed his blood, but he also had, if he wouldn't have defeated the grave, where would we be? Huh? But he had the power to defeat the grave and the devil. Amen? That's what Jesus did. But since they don't believe in Jesus, where do they get their victories? Where do they get their strength? The only strength we have is from the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. In the flesh, we have no strength but in the Holy Spirit. So where do they get their power to overcome sin, or do they? The Bible says, Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, 
So if there's if they're not accepting Jesus, and I've never heard of Jehovah Witnesses talking to them how they get forgiveness. I've never heard them. So if, if the wages of sin is death, well, they do believe when you die, you're just dead. The only Jehovah Witnesses that are going to go to heaven are, are the ones that are still alive when God comes back, when Jehovah comes back. If, when Jehovah God comes back, the Jehovah Witnesses that are living, those are the ones that are going to go to heaven. That's what they believe. But if you die as a Jehovah Witness before Jehovah comes back, you're just dead. That's what they believe. They're deceiving people. This teaches is on deception in the church. This is a big deception. So how do they get forgiveness? Hebrews 9.22, for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So if they don't believe in Jesus, there is no forgiveness. There's much more I can say about Jehovah's Witness, but I want I want to show others. But just know this, Jehovah's Witnesses are, in, are, are the antichrists, telling nothing but lies and deceiving people. I'll get more on that in a minute. 1 Timothy 6, verses 3 through 5. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Amen. Amen. This is our teachings from the Lord Jesus. Some people might not believe it. These teachings promote a godly life. You want to live a godly life? <laughs> Take the teachings of God. Amen. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person as, uh, has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of the words. This stirs up arguments and an jealousy, division, slander, and, even, and evil superstitions. This person has the sin of pride. That's what they have. To believe they can judge the words of God. And that's what they're doing. They're judging our Bible. The inspired words of God. Their Bible. Their Bible has been written several times. Rewritten several times. Why do they want to live by their Bible? Hey, this might be a mistake this time. Because it was a mistake last time and they corrected but. Who says this to be right? Because they didn't just change it one time. They have rewrote their Bible several times. Wow. And they have a group of men called the Society who finds these mistakes. <laughs> really? I hope y'all are hearing this. Yeah. I hope y'all are hearing this. I myself <laughs> would have to say they're full of hot air. <laughs> huh? That's what I would say. And I also would call them very ignorant. Romans 10.3. It says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And that's exactly what they are. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Isn't that what they're doing? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This is why we need. To study the words of God. Amen. Because there are. I guess I'll call it really. There are religions out there. There are cults. And they're going door to door. And they're not the only. Uh, Antichrists out there. Mormons. Same thing. Servants of the devil. Oh Jesse. How can you call them? Have you seen their commercials? Yeah. I've seen them. The devil presents himself always in a pleasurable way. He always does. He doesn't come to, to people with horns and a, and a fork. They'd run off. So he comes to them in, in beauty and pleasure. Just like Las Vegas. Las Vegas is, is beautiful. But it's all sin over there. But it's from the devil. It's from the devil. And there's just another one. that Oh, they carry the King James Bible. 
They carry it, but that's it. They just carry it. They teach out of the Book of Mormons. 2 Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. This is why we're here, right? So we're not ignorant of what, how he works. We, we're learning how the devil works. Those of us who study the Bible will not be deceived. Amen. Amen. So praise God you're here. Amen. Praise God. Now verse 5, 1 Timothy 6. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt. And we're talking about the Antichrist. The little Antichrist. And they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. That's their way of showing godliness. Causing trouble. <laughs> causing trouble meaning they confuse you. They confuse people they talk to. They have the mind of corruption. What's, what does that sound like? The devil to me. Because it is from the devil. He's the master of lies, right? Yeah. He's the father of lies. And the thing is, they don't know it. Most of them don't know it. Yeah. They believe whatever Jehovah Witness came to them, they believe them, so that's the way they're going. Yeah. Now just think if we would have got there first. Amen? Amen? They do the same as all the lost people. <laughs> they don't want to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Becoming wealthy, you know what that means? It doesn't mean money. It can mean money, but when it says uh, a way to become wealthy, it's talking about whatever they can get from you, and it doesn't mean money. It can mean money, but it doesn't just mean money. Whatever they can get from you, they'll take it. Whatever. So do you know what I'm talking about when I say it's not always money? It also says in Acts 8 9, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people, which that's what... Antichrists do. The people of Samaria are giving out that he himself was a great one. The Samarian people looked at his miracles, and because he was doing miracles, and were were, were were at all of them. You know, God, you know, they were amazed because he was doing them. It was coming from the devil. The devil, just like Pharaoh. What did his sorcerers, his, his magicians do? They threw their rod down and they turned into snakes. Right. So the devil can do these things. Right. But the thing is, it's counterfeit. Because what did Aaron's, Moses, uh, Aaron's snake do? <laughs> he ate those counterfeits. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Like today, doing false miracles in front of the church, like there's someone, these men who get up there and they're just laying hands on everybody. And they're all falling down. That's a show. Yeah. But they're up there thinking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to be pretty blind to see that that's not from the Lord. The Lord doesn't work that way. Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord work. Did he go down the aisles touching everybody? He didn't work that way. He still does it. But these false preachers do. They do it for attention. They mainly do it for money. Oh, if I can heal these many people, I'm going to have a good uh, offering here. Galatians 2.18. Their sinful minds have made them proud in the flesh. Well, you can tell uh, on TV, uh, these false preachers, they get up there like they're somebody yeah. when they're nobody. They're nobody. 
the Lord says that these men, knowing nothing, it does anger him. This is what the Lord said. Romans 1, verses 8 through 22. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. wickedness. Those people are going to pay for it. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. So the Lord has shown himself to these people. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky through everything God made that can clearly see his invisible qualities, his internal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yet, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or giving him thanks. We're talking about the little antichrists out here, and I already told you who they are. And they began to think up foolish ideals, foolish ideals of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Lana, where does confusion come from? It comes from the devil. So all this is by antichrists who are led by the devil. Remember, I did a teaching. There's two kings. The devil is right now is the prince and power of the air here on earth. He's a king. Why is he a king? I have a teaching on it. He's a king because he defeated a king. Adam was a king because God gave dominion to Adam over everything. So Adam was a king. So when you defeat a king, what's that make you? A king. So right now, you either follow the, the, the king, the devil, or you follow the true king, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 22, it says, claiming to be wise, claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. Did y'all hear that? They think they're so wise. But God says, God says, y'all are fools. <laughs> Amen? Amen? God is good. I like God. I, I, I like what he's, he calls it like it is. Amen? Amen? Since the beginning of the time, they had men who wanted to be to, who wanted to have a different way to heaven. Since the beginning of, this is not new. This is, has been, been happening since the beginning of time. They had a man named Nimrod. Who was from the bloodline of Noah. After the flood. He was the first antichrist. He began his kingdom, his kingdom in Chirnar. Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. And, and Crush begot Nimrod, which Nimrod means rebel. That should have told him something right there. <laughs> he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the, land, before the Lord. Now, we're going to see what he was a mighty hunter of in a minute. But it says, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter, hun hunter before the Lord. Verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Baal, which means confusion. <laughs> and he had three others with him in the land of Shinar that followed him. But then when you drop to the next chapter, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, <laughs> and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, this is what they said to each other, these men up here, Nimrod and these other men. They said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, this is what they're saying, go 
Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach on to heaven. They were making another way to heaven. And let us make us a name. Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. They were building this their way to heaven. Their way to heaven. By who? By Nimrod. He was the leader. He was the first antichrist. He didn't want it God's way. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this is they begin to do, and now nothing will, will restrain from them which they have imagined to do, which they have imagined to do. You have men who say that God was worried that these men might become God because they're making their own way to heaven. Really? The Bible has already told us what the, imagine of, the imagination of men. The good the Lord's already told us. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And it is, right? And that every imagination... Of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. So is the earth ever going to become perfect? Is it ever going to become sinless? No. God said in their hearts it was only evil continually. Genesis 8.21 For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So this is what they're imagining. They wanted to make their own way, build their own way to heaven. What do you think these cults are doing? Oh, you don't need Jesus. We got a way to heaven. Mormons, you can become a God and have your own heaven, have your own world. We have religions and cults that say deep inside, Everyone has goodness. They just have to let it out. <laughs> That's not what the Lord said. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down. Now this is the Trinity. This is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from the thence, from thence upon the earth, face of the earth, and they left off to build a city. They couldn't build a city anymore because nobody could understand what others were doing. Uh, <laughs> do you really want to go against the Lord? Because He'll find a way to make you look like a fool. Amen. Now remember, in chapter ten, verses ten through 10, uh, nine through ten. They called Nimrod a mighty hunter. Well, he was. He was a mighty hunter of men. He wanted men to follow him. Wasn't of animals. He was a mighty hunter of men. That's why the Lord said, hey, when you read the Bible, study it. Because if you study it, you'll realize, well, you're up here you read that he's a mighty hunter. Well, you're thinking animals. Well, then further down we see, no. It wasn't even animals. He was hunting men to follow him. Got that? Not only did he want to build a tower, he also wanted to build a city. Like I said in verse 4. And the Lord stopped it. He stopped both of them. You're not going to build a city and you're not going to build this tower. <laughs> Cults want to cut themselves off from the Lord completely, just like Nimrod did. Cut, cut themselves off completely. We don't need God. We make our own way. Verse 9, therefore is the name of it called Baal, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Well, Jesse, 
I've always wondered how come we got so many different languages. Now we know. Amen. Amen. Now we know. <laughs> now, it didn't say he got rid of them. It didn't say he got rid of them or destroyed them. He said he scattered them throughout the earth. So they've always been here from the beginning of time. They've been scattered throughout the earth. This is why we still have men like Nimrod and Antichrist, anti, little Antichrist. The Antichrist, the Antichrist, listen to me. If he's not already here, I would have to say it's pretty darn close. Because this world, oh my gosh, it is definitely, without a doubt, destroying itself. Now in James 3.15, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. This is where wisdom of men come from. It's not from above. It's from the earth. It's devilish. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trust cursed be the man that trusteth in man. You want to put your trust in a man? What's the Lord said? Your curse. Your curse. And that's why I had to tell my brother in law, You're going to hell. Why? Because he kept pointing me to a man. What's it say right here? If you trust in a man, cursed are you. So was I lying to him? I might have been a little bit too hard on him, but sometimes, listen to me. Now, sometimes the Lord leads me to be easy on people. He really does. But then there's times he tells me, and it's in the scripture. I forgot which one it is, but there's times he tells me to drop the hammer on him. He does. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh, man again, his arm. His arm meaning his strength, making this man his strength and whose heart departed from the Lord. So this man, his heart has departed from the Lord, the one that you trust, the one that you put your, your, your faith in for, for strength. That man has departed from the Lord. They can easily, easily lead you away from the Lord. Easily. Their teachings will never unite everyone. They will never. The true word of God will. The true word of God can. Ephesians 4.13 Till we all come in the unity of faith. Apparently it's going to happen because the Lord said it. He said, till we all come in the unity of faith. So apparently it's going to happen. Right. We don't see it because there's so many different religions out there. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. This will happen. It might not happen till tribulation. Because in the tribulation, I mean, it's going to be so much fear in the tribulation. Uh, Baptists will gather with Pentecostals and Pentecostals will gather with Methodists and everybody's going to get together because they're, just, they're scared of what's going on out there. So that, I, I don't know, I'm just saying that might be it. But it is going to happen because God said it. Well, we will come into the unity of faith. Another false teaching in the church, another one. Ephesians, no, this one, Hits the Baptists. You know, I, I got the Catholics, the Pentecost, the Jehovah, and it's the Mormons. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, and then verse 15. And this is the Lord. He gave some to the church. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. This is the gifts the Lord has given to the church, okay? There are some preachers who especially in the Baptist church, who say uh, they, long, they no longer have apostles and prophets. That was just for back then. That was just in the Old Testament. Well, since this is in the same verse as evangelists, pastors, and teachers, 
the same verse. Well, I guess we don't have those either. Because who are they to say, well, this part of the verse we still have, but the same verse, but we don't have these anymore. <laughs> huh? Y'all see that? I mean, how can they say we don't, that's no more, that's just in the Old Testament when it's in the same verse as having gifts of pastors and teachers? <laughs> study the Bible. Re study it. You'll see these things. The Lord will show you. Why did the Lord give us these men who have gifts of being leaders? Well, he tells, in, he tells us in verse 12 why we have teach, he has given the gift of teaching and preaching for the perfecting of the saints. Amen? Amen. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? That's why we have these preachers and teachers who have the gift to do these things. So I can teach y'all how we can edify the Lord, lift the Lord up. Praise him. Amen. Why do you think the Lord gave me this gift of teaching? I am not a teacher. I am not a teacher. Believe me. But when the Lord takes over and brings the gift out in me, that's what he brings out. A teacher. A teacher. How could I ever become a teacher when I hate reading? I hate reading. I've never read a book. I don't even know how I graduated, okay? <laughs> but look what he's done. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's the only way I can get up here and do this is through the Holy Spirit. But anyway, he's given us these gifts so we can grow and be more, be no more, what the scriptures say, be no more babes in the words of God. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. Glanna, you're a babe in Christ right now. But he doesn't want you to stay there. I've given you all an illustration one time. You take a, a one-year-old baby, one-year-old, and everything they do is cute, even when they throw up. <laughs> everything they do is cute. Now, you take that one-year-old baby Come see him again 20 years later, and he's still doing the same thing. Is that cute anymore? That's not cute anymore. So the, God, so the Lord does not want us to stay babes. And that's why you're here, Lana, so you can grow. You don't want to stay a baby Christian, do you? None of us do. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse thir uh, verses 13 and 14. For a for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. So if you're still taking milk, which is just the, the basics of Christianity, you know, get baptized and stuff like that, go to church on Sunday. <laughs> but strong meat, strong meat, that's studying. But strong meat belonging to them that are full of age even those who by reason of us have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen? Amen. When you can discern that, you're a mature Christian. Because a lot of us, a lot of us, there's some sin we don't look at as sin. One of the biggest signs is in Ephesians when it says we don't fight against flesh and blood. When you can recognize that, that we're not, we're not fighting against people. We're fighting against the spirit world. When you can see that, recognize that, you're becoming a mature Christian. Because you're looking with spiritual eyes now. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Is my motive doing this, is it for money? Those of you who tithe to me, it's not to me. It's to the Lord. Home church ministry is of the Lord. It's not Jesse's. The Lord is using me to have this ministry. 
So whatever you give, it's going to the Lord. It's going to the ministry of home church, uh, home church ministry. And it's only going to be spent on what the tithe money should be spent on. The tithe money is to feed the one who feeds you, to take care of them. It's for the widows, and it's for orphans. It's for people who need help. That's what the tithe money is for, period. It's not for choir robes. It's not to build a nice big building that's called a church. It's not for all that. They made, that's such a deception in the church also that they use the tithe money for all this junk. Junk. Y'all hear me? It's junk. We were, the church I go to, we were supposed to build another sanctuary and it was going to cost a lot of money. And I went and ate lunch with the pastor one day and he asked me, he says, what do you think about that? I told him, and this is what I told him. I said, pastor, you know how many poor people we could feed with that money? Instead of building a material, material church, material not people church, a material church. And that's what I told them. I guess the Lord used me to let them know because the next Sunday, uh, we're not going to do this. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. But that's what I told them. Why? Because I was led by the Holy Spirit. When you, The Lord says, when you don't know what to say, the Spirit will give you the words to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the only way that's going to happen is if you're walking in the Spirit. Amen. If you're not walking in the Spirit, then how's the Spirit going to talk, speak through you? Right? Right. right? I like walking in the Spirit. Amen. Now, one time, it was just the opposite. I was, went to a church, and the Lord was putting it on me to get up and say, and, and say something. But I was fighting. I, was, I mean, I'm just a visitor here. Uh, you know, nobody knows me. I'm just a visitor, and I didn't do it. And right after that final, I didn't do it. I wasn't going to do it. Right after that, a guy uh, further up in front of the church said exactly what the Lord wanted me to say. So I missed a blessing for, for quenching the spirit. Y'all hear me? Don't quench the spirit. You're going to hate it. Because the Lord told me to say these things and I didn't do it. And then he got another, he'll get, an, he'll get someone else. He got another guy up there and said, I mean, I was like, ah, I was so mad at myself. Because that's what God wanted me to say in that church and I didn't. And I missed the blessing. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, the Lord will use you. I was walking in the spirit. I was at that church. But when he spoke to me, I quenched the spirit. So if you're quenching the spirit, you're no longer walking with the Lord, right? right? Am I doing this to be popular? That's, <laughs> I mean, I'm not popular with lost people, and I'm not popular with Christians, right? right. How many Christians are here? <laughs> do I do it so people can look up at me? No, because I've always told you, this is not me. When I'm up here, it's the Holy Spirit. Because right. Jesse, we're all the same. Just because I'm up here, that doesn't make me higher than y'all. In no way. Okay? No. The reason I do this is out of love. I want y'all to become mature Christians so when the devil does attack, and he is going to attack, he will attack y'all. But when he does, you'll have the words of God in you. Just like Jesus. When the devil attacked them, what did Jesus say? It is written. He said, the Lord said. That's what he was saying. God said. Amen? Amen. Now, next week, I think we'll finish next week. One more part. And I, I think that'll be it, but... This teaching is, is on deception in the church. And like I said, it's on the churches we go to, the church I go to. They're deceiving the people saying that uh, that was just in the Old Testament time. 
They're wrong by saying that. They're deceiving the people. They think, oh, well, the Old Testament was for back, just for back then. And when they come up to me and say that, I'll, I'll tell them. This is what I tell them. Well, you know, back in Genesis, when God uh, gave punishment to the devil, to Eve and to Adam, and he told Eve that she would have pain at childbirth, do they still have that pain? Yeah. yeah. Well, then... It's still for today. If, the, if child pain has went away from women, then, okay, the Old Testament was for just back then. But no, women still have pain today, and the God said this is going to happen back in Genesis, and it's still today. So how can they take the Old Testament and say, oh, that was just for back then? Okay, well, why do women still have pain then? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, you are so awesome. Awesome, Lord. I love studying your words. You're an awesome God. And thank you, thank you, thank you for opening our eyes so we can receive you as our God, our Savior. Because, Lord, we were all dead. We were all dead going to hell. But because of your love and your grace and your mercy, you have received us as your children. So, Lord, let us, let us praise you in every way we know. Let us worship you in every way we know how to show our thankfulness of what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.